Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to this luxury edition of a Cola Keller video. Today, we're going to talk about high-end vocal microphones, and that's going to be a lot of fun. What I got right in front of me here are three microphones, three tube microphones, worth something like, I guess, 10,000 euros all together. Very sexy looking, very sexy sounding. These are some of the greatest sounding microphones, very detailed, very intimate sounding, very open sounding. And today I wanna record vocals with them. Two of those microphones are from my mic locker and one of those mics is brand new. It is the new flagship microphone from Lewid Audio. And I can promise you this microphone has some unique features you have never seen before. I'm gonna show you those features today and we're gonna compare those microphones. As usual, we will have a lot of fun. And as you know, mostly, most of the time, I'm recording like harsh and aggressive metal vocals. But today I wanna to do something else. You know, I don't wanna work with any of those death metal savages today. No, no. Instead, I have invited my lovely wife because those microphones deserve a more beautiful voice, let's be honest. Those microphones shine on more intimate vocals and uh, yeah, that's how I wanna test them. And we're gonna record a song that we did together a few years ago. All right, let's check out the song first that we are about to record and then I will walk you through the microphones we're using and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun as usual. Here we go. That's a beautiful song, isn't it? I haven't heard it for a while. Really cool song. There was a JZ microphone in the video, but you know, you, you should never believe any studio videos if they aren't live anyway, but we just used it because it looked cool. Don't get me wrong, the JZ microphone is cool. I use it a lot, but not for these kinds of vocals. So what we actually used, and that's the first microphone I wanna talk about, is this M990 from Mikotech Gefell which is, as you all know, the East German Neumann, and they make world-class microphones. This is a tube microphone, a very detailed, a very open, yet linear sounding microphone. Like I said, very detailed. I love it on acoustic guitar. I love it on intimate vocals like these ones, but I have also used it, for example, on bass cabinets um, because it has a very, very deep and linear low end. Great microphone. The next one is over here, hope you can see it. It is the SE Electronics RNT, which is the Rupert Neve tube microphone. I have used it on this channel quite often because I, you find it over there quite a lot on my Mesa Boogie cab. So I use it for recording distorted guitars where it sounds great, often mixed with an SM57. Great microphone. It has the typical uh, like like very open, very crispy sounding high end that all those SE Electronics condenser microphones have, which again makes it very intimate. The M990 sounds more linear yet open. The SE is also a little thinner, which means you can get really close with vocals and can make them sound really intimate without getting too much of the proximity effect. It sounds overall a little more colored, but it's a great microphone. I guess the, the, the color comes from all the transformers that Rupert Neve, rest in peace, 
uh, put into this microphone. So those are the two microphones that I already know, and they would be my usual contenders for a vocal session like this, where I don't record any stuff, but intimate, soft vocals. And now we got a new microphone that was just sent to me by Lewitt. I think they have just released it this week. And this is a unique microphone. It's their new flagship. It's called LCT 1040. And what's so special about it? Well, it has some unique features that you haven't seen before. Just look at the remote control. We have a remote control that you can have in your control room. And that is so cool. Hello, AKG. You promised something like this for the, for the 414s like 10 years ago, but never did it. So they did it, which means you can dial in the right polar pattern sitting right in front of your speakers or the filter or the attenuation and all those parameters where you usually have to walk into your live room and switch and go back. But here you can sit and switch between whatever, cardioid and omni. There's even another button where you can hear the backside of the microphone. Isn't that cool? For example, for room miking, you can just check out both sides of the microphone, which one sounds better. You know, while sitting in your studio chair, really comfortable, especially for lazy people like me. So this remote control is fantastic. But those are the more normal features. This microphone has some very special features. One of them being that it has four different sound modes. I haven't heard them because we're about to record. So I'm really curious uh, how, how big the difference will be. But there are four sound modes. So you can switch to warm or to dark or to saturated. That is so interesting. Again, while sitting in your sweet spot in the control room. The next feature, and that is also something unique, is that the amplifier of the microphone has two circuits. So there's one tube and one transistor circuit, and then they can even be mixed with this big knob here. So you can go all tube or all transistor or something in between. Now we wanna find out how it compares to two of my favorite microphones and two of the finest microphones that I own. And um, yeah, maybe, in another video, I will also try it on other sources like guitars, but today it's only vocals. And that means I have to call my wife now and hopefully I can talk her into singing the song a few more times. That's all for now. I see you in the control room. Hello, boys and girls. I'm back in my main control room and we've just recorded all the vocals. So it's not only those three microphones. In the last moments, I added a fourth microphone, which is the Shure SM7B, because I could already hear you crying. I don't have a reference. I don't know. I can't compare it. So we also got the Shure SM7B, which is one of the most popular vocal mics these days, and it's a good microphone. So yeah, that might help you. By the way, you can also download all those files. You know, if you don't care about my opinion, if you don't want to hear me walking you through those files, you can download them yourself. What you have to do is you have to subscribe to my email list and sell your soul to the devil. Okay? So, uh, yeah, so I can send you emails whenever I want. Wake you up at midnight. No, don't worry, you can't do that with emails. <laughs> Subscribe to my email list, follow the instructions, and you can download those files and a lot more free stuff. IRs, samples, you know, stuff. All the free stuff I have been giving away in my videos. Okay, so we're going to compare those four microphones and we're also going to compare the four different modes that the Lewid microphone has. By the way, look at this. And believe me, this is fucking heavy. This is the remote control of the Lewid. Isn't that fancy? By the way, the whole system looks so freaking sexy. I think there are a few unpacking videos on YouTube already. It's a big suitcase, you know, full of stuff. It really feels like luxury. So this thing is incredibly heavy. You can do some workout with it. And the mic also looks incredible. Wait a minute. Not bad, huh? With a glowing tube. Let me walk you through those recordings now and let me tell you what I think. At the end of the video, I'm also gonna add um, a part where I just switch between the four microphones. Let's start with the Lewitt microphone. I started by using what I thought was the most transparent or the most linear mode, which is the clear mode. And no filter, no attenuation, and all mics are just cardioid today okay so i wasn't using the different patterns which gives you 
even more options because not only the, the, the pattern changes, the sound changes also if you go to whatever, uh, Omni or Figure of Eight or something. And if I don't tell you anything else, it's always in tube mode because we are comparing tube microphones. Okay, so let's have a listen to the Lewid microphone first. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you about the signal path. Cranbourne mic preamps, no mojo used, just a Cranbourne priest, which sound really, really clean. And um, you can see here on every track, I got a distressor, I'll leave it on for a second, uh, in opto mode doing some compression, but it's the same everywhere and all the files are level matched. Enjoy. I never get you out of my head. Will I ever get you out of my head? And is there nothing I can do against you? And that sounds nice. Sounds nice, right? It sounds very high fidelity. It sounds very clear. Yeah, that's what they say, right? It sounds clear. And it has that 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 sheen, that shimmer, you know, that that high frequency shh on top of the voice, which makes it sound very modern, very intimate, and in your face, just like pop vocals should sound. Have a listen. I never get you out of my head. And this is already pretty close to what I call a final vocal sound. Of course, it need more, needs more compression and a little EQing and stuff, but it really sounds in your face, intimate, hi-fi, really nice. Let's just compare this to the SM7, so you know where you're coming from. So, Lewitt. I never get you out of my head. Will I ever get you out? of my head and that's the sm7b well that sounds rather boxy in comparison am i right i mean it's not bad i think it i can fix that but the lewitt sounds a lot more a lot more like a record like you know like pop vocals are supposed to sound uh let's have another listen or let's go here start with sm7 will i ever get you out of my head. So the SM7 doesn't have that high-end sheen, that shimmer at all. And uh, it seems to sound a little boxy. And also it feels like it doesn't have the same resolution. Let's listen one more time. Start with a Lewitt. I never get you out of my head. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but it really, really needs some processing to, to sit right in this mix. Okay, but I, I mean, I wasn't expecting the SM7B to have the same resolution and the same, whatever, finesse that any of those 3K uh, mics have. By the way, I forgot to say one thing. I'm using those microphones on those soft vocals because that's where they shine. I never use any of those mics, except for the SM7B sometimes, for that more aggressive and harsh vocals. But we're gonna test this later in this video. But now let's switch between the Lewitt and the SE Electronics RNT. I never get you out of my head. I never get you out of my head. I never get you out of my head. That sounds a lot closer. Still interesting that the Lewitt sounds a lot more hi-fi. So the, the RNT has also like a certain uh, mid-bump. It feels like it has a oh, mid-bump somewhere around 500 maybe, 500, 600, around there, which I don't like here very much. It's interesting that the Lewitt is even more airy than the RNT, which, me which means it is a very airy sounding microphone, at least in this mode. Let's have another listen and, and, and concentrate on that oh, frequency the RNT is bringing in. I never get you out of my head. I never get you out of my head. 
Interesting, but it, it seems like the low end, like the chest frequencies are kind of like the same. So it's the same thickness. Then the R and T has some kind of mid bump and the Lewitt has more extreme highs. I know it sounds stupid, but the Lewitt sounds a little more clear, you know. Uh, I mean, I can read, it says clear, right? So it's, yeah. Let's compare the Lewitt to the Mikotech Gefell mic, let's see. I never get you out of my head I never get you out of my head I never get you out of my head I never get you out so this is interesting. It's it's the same difference, just more extreme. So the M990 now sounds a little cloudy compared to the Lewitt because it doesn't have those very extreme highs. And there, again, seems to be a mid bump. But you know what I think? I actually think that both the SE Electronics and the Mikotec Gefell sound more linear and that it is the Lewitt in that clear mode that somehow manages to remove some of those lower mids that might make your vocals sound cloudy and with those added highs it sounds really really extremely mix ready and and sexy and intimate um, for vocals like this i just don't believe it's linear i, I believe that the mikotech gefell is more linear than the lewitt but who cares right now for me if i had to choose one of those i would choose the lewitt and what i would do is i would add a deesser because the disadvantage of those very extreme highs is that it sounds a little more sibilant. Listen to the I never get shh you out. I never get you out. Compared to this. I never get you out. But you know, both need a deesser. The the Louis just a little more. Still, if you compare this, it just sounds more mix ready. I never get you out of my head. Because here, I'm pretty sure I would remove something around. I never get you out of my head. To make things a little more clear. How often have I said clear? I never get you out yeah. of my head. Otherwise, it sounds a little boxy with her voice, a little cloudy. So that's interesting. Yeah, if you want some, some intimate sounding pop vocals, the Lewitt wins. Okay, next test is, I asked uh, my wife to sing, get really close to the microphone and sing there. So that's, that's the next comparison. It's the same, let's just take the same phrase. And this time, you will hear it immediately, we're a lot closer to, to the mic. Start with... Lewis. I never get you out of my head. Hey there, I'm sitting here editing the video and I just decided to leave out the part with the closed mic vocals to make the video more catchy. If you still want to hear the closed mic vocals, you just download the files. They are included. Let's move on. But let's check out the different sound modes, the sound options. I'm going to switch between what we just heard, the clear mode in with the tube setting, and then we're going to check out both the warm and the dark setting, okay? Maybe I, I want to go from clear to dark directly, because that's the biggest difference. I never get you out of my head. I never get you out of my head. And that is the dark mode. So you can see that high-end shimmer seems to be gone. It sounds fuller and darker. Again, let's start with a clear mode. I never get you out of my head. And dark. I never get you out of my head. Wow. And the warm mode seems to be somewhere in between. So let's start with clear again, then go to warm. I never get you out. I never get you out. 
both those modes kind of remove that extreme airiness that the clear mode has. So that is already really cool. So if you feel like, hey, this is a little too much for my taste, you can dial it back and get a yeah darker, warmer tone. You will see that the dark mode also brings the mids back and it sounds closer to the other two microphones we have. So this is the dark mode. I never get you out of my head. And this is the RNT. I never get you out of my head. So now it's darker than the RNT. And this is the Mikrotek Gefell. I never get you out of my head. And dark mode. I never get you out. Very close. Of my head. So you can go from something a lot more airy to something darker than the other microphones. And that is pretty damn cool, don't you think? That is really nice. There's another mode called saturated mode. Let's have a listen. I never get you out of my head. And there seems to be a certain mid color coming in. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't call it saturation, but there's some, some flavor in the mids. I never get you out of my head. I forgot to say one thing. So far, we were always comparing the same take. I'm always trying to compare the same vocal take because each take is different. Of course, when we compare the different modes of the microphone, right now, we are listening to different takes because I just got one mic only. So let's do that one more time. We start with clear. I never get you out. Dark. I never get you out. Saturated. I never get you out. Yeah, saturated actually has more highs than dark, but a certain mid color, like a little, sounds a little more tubey or something. Nice. It actually reminds me like, a little more of the SM7. Now, I want to do another test, a very special test, because I would never use any of those microphones, except for the SM7, for aggressive and harsh vocals. And my wife also used to play together with me in a band called Cocoon. You can check, I put a link below. The, the, our CD from 15 years ago has been re-released by Six Records. It's actually pretty cool music. I'll put a link below, check it out. Uh, you, you can also hear how, how, how bad my productions sounded. 15 years ago. Anyway, in Cocoon, she was singing really loud, like aggressive rock vocals. So I just quickly asked her to, to do some, some louder stuff so we can hear the microphones in a totally different environment. And I can exactly show you why I don't like those microphones on vocals like this. And I wanted to find out if the different modes in the Lewitt mic actually make it more usable for these kinds of voices. So we start with the RNT. Let me solo it. Let's turn off the reverb. I never can get you Especially during the out. You can hear that. You hear that? And that's what I don't like about those airy sounding mics on vocals like this. Can get you There's, there seem to be like a lot of overtones doing doing something nasty. Those mics are just not made for vocals like that. If we listen to the SM7. Never can get you just listen to the out. None of those nasty overtones added compared to this. And you know, if you use the Lewitt microphone in the clear mode, this gets even worse, you can imagine. But I tried using it in the dark tube mode. So let's see how it performs. RNT M990 So you can hear there's less there are less of these annoying overtones 
and it gets a lot closer to an SM7B. Which still sounds the best here, by the way. But that means you can actually tame the beast quite a bit and make even the most aggressive vocals sound a little more charming. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's actually really cool. So you can just sit here, you know, I can sit here, lazy as I am, and if I feel like, hey, uh, in the verse, the vocals should be intimate, so I go to the clear mode, but in the chorus where things get louder and sound like this, I just switch to the warm or dark mode. That is pretty fucking powerful, because I'm too lazy to actually remove the microphone and use another one. Maybe it sounds to different, different levels. You know, you just don't do that. Mostly we just use one vocal mic. Final test I want to do, let's compare tube and transistor mode. Again, you can download all those files yourself. I will bounce them later. So we're, here we are. So now we're back in clear, in the clear mode, and um, we're switching between tube and transistor. And this time without compression. Let's have a listen. I never get you out of my head. I never get you out of my head. So the transistor mode is even more airy. I never get you out. I never get you out. It seems to be adding even more of that clear character. So things are getting faster. It feels like faster and, and you know, uh, so things just sound a little bit more like a, like a small diaphragm condenser, you know, fast transients, more highs, maybe less lower mids. I never get you out. It sounds thinner. This is tube. I never get you out. So I would say that's a little too much. In the, in the clear mode, you absolutely want to use the tube circuit. But this gives you the possibility for example if you're using the dark mode and if that's slightly too dark to just go back a little bit and dial in some of the transistor circuit so you can basically just do anything in between those different modes that's how it feels or you can go back to more of that clear sound by adding less of the tube and more of the transistor circuit Another nice feature. So with all those combinations, and we, we, we haven't talked about the different polar patterns, which I'm sure will give us different sounds. If you go to white cardioid or if you go to figure of eight or to hypercardioid or something, um, that will sound different, um, especially in the low end if you get close. I would say this is a microphone with a lot of options. All right, let, let me sum it up. I haven't, I've just tested it on those vocals. I think I want to test this a little more uh, especially on guitars, acoustic guitars and guitar cabs. But what I can say right now is that this is, first of all, a high-end microphone. It feels and sounds and looks extremely expensive, you know, uh, really cool. And on top of that, uh, yeah, you are getting more out of one microphone because there are all those different uh, features here. So. On these vocals, it can sound more like the Gefell microphone. It can sound a little more like, an, like a dynamic microphone. The highs can be tamed, the mids can be controlled. A lot of options. And the coolest part is you can do it right here in your sweet spot in the control room. That is freaking powerful. Do I need a microphone like this? I don't know. I own something like 50 microphones. So I can just use the Gefell or I can just use the SM7. But if you are starting out and need one great sounding setup that is versatile because you can't and you don't want to afford 15 different microphones, you might want to check it out. And uh, like I said, this is one of the most sexy setups I've ever seen. Um, uh, what else? If you are just recording harsh vocals, if you're just recording death metal, you don't need a microphone like this. Okay? You just don't need it. Then you can buy an SM7 or, like I showed in my last video, like the Austrian or the Neumann. Oh, here it is, by the way, the Neumann microphone. Um, there are other mics out there. I put a li as usual. There will be links to all the gear to all the gear used below. But if you want something very versatile, overall a rather airy sounding microphone, um, you should check this out. Well done, Lewitt. Good job. 
That's all for today. Um, I want you to subscribe to this channel and ring the ding dang dong bell. Uh, if you want to get the files, you subscribe to my email list. If you are interested in my wife's music, she's not doing that project anymore, but I think you can get the music somehow. You leave a comment. I will also put a link to a music video that she did a few years ago uh, in the description. And you can click there and you can comment there or get in touch with her or get in touch with me. We'll find a way that you, that you get the music in case you liked it. If you're just a death metal guy, you don't need that music. I get it. Um, you know, but we have those pop moments every now and then, don't we? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be funny again. I'm sorry. So um, I think that's all. Download the files, play around with them, check out the Lewitt microphone. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me, yeah, let me know how you want me to test that microphone in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list. That's the only way to get the files. Am I repeating my... I guess so. I see you on my Discord server. I see you hopefully next week or something. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye. I never get you out of my head Will I ever get you out of my head? Is there nothing I can do against you? I never get you out of my head I never get you out of my head Will I ever get you out of my head? And is there nothing I can do against you? I never get you out of my head.